Hi, welcome to Sweat Pixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon, I'm the editor of Sweat Pixel, and we'd like to thank Lembo Resort for sponsoring this episode. Lembo Resort, um, obviously in the iconic Lembo Straits in Indonesia, um, home to some amazing muck diving and um, critter destinations. If you're planning a, a trip to, to Indonesia for, for muck diving, please have a look at lemberesort.com. Um, and um, I'm joined today by Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hi. Uh, you like my T-shirt? <laughs> Very topical. A, um, I, I just happen to have a Lembe T-shirt um, yeah, on today. Yeah. I'm not normally, um, but yeah, I, I have been to Lembe Resort. And yeah, this is, um, I've, I've got their T-shirt on today. And, and even more topically, um, my my question today, Alex, is, is I was going to ask him specifically what advice he could give to underwater photographers that are planning to visit the Lembe Strait uh, and possibly Lembe Resort as well. So um, obviously there are other resorts in the Strait, which, which should make, we should make yeah, that clear uh, as absolutely. well. Absolutely, but I, I think um, this is a really interesting area to talk about in underwater photography because you know, we talk a lot on Wet Pixel Life about generic advice for underwater photography. And yep. actually, there's a huge amount in, in specifically that relates to destinations yeah, that sure. I think can really improve your productivity, your capabilities um, and your success rate in those places. And yep. I think it would be well worth us dealing with a number of these destinations. Um, I haven't got a T-shirt for all of them, I'm afraid, but over the coming weeks, um, because I think it's really um, it's really valuable for underwater photographers to think specifically, particularly when preparing. And I think hopefully as the world begins to say, open yeah. up over the coming months and, and year or so, and we yep. get back to these places, arriving as prepared as possible can, can really make a difference. So yep. I think the very first thing to say about Lembe is the Lembe Strait is an incredibly famous diving area. But you have to be prepared when you're going there that this is not a classic white sand, tropical beach, blue water destination. And although many people are going to meet, yes, of course, we all know this, Alex, you meet on every trip you go to Lembe, that's not a photo workshop, when you go and stay in the resorts, you meet people there who said, well, I came to Lembe because I knew it was famous for diving. And you meet people that don't like the diving. Um, and yet in the same resort, you meet people who only now go on holiday in Lembe because it's their favorite place to dive in the world. And I think you need to be aware of the fact that Lembe diving, you're diving a lot of the time over dive sites that do not have scenery. It can yeah. be black sand, it can be mud, it can be rubbly reef. There is not attractive scenery to see in many of the dive sites. The visibility yeah. is often limited as well. So you're diving in yeah. poor visibility over poor scenery. And quite a lot of the dive sites also have litter and junk and trash on them as well. And yep. if you are not prepared for that when you're going, you are probably going to have a big shock. So I know that most people watching this video are probably well aware of what Lembe is, but there are plenty of people in the diving world who see these beautiful resorts with, you know, you know, lovely, you know, rainforest behind them, beautiful rooms, famous diving, and yep. don't actually pay attention to what the diving is. So, however, for underwater photographers, when you go and explore those environments, what is incredible about them is Lembe in particular has a real richness of the bizarre, the weird, the crazy, the amazing underwater animals that are adapted to live in these different environments. It's yep. in, in, in terms of um, Constantinos's, Petrinos's original book on Lembe, it's the realm of the pygmy seahorse. But it's also the realm of frogfish, the realm of wonderpus, the round of, of mimic octopus, the round of blue ring octopus, the, you know, the realm of incredible numbers of nudibranchs, you know, yep. it's ghost pipefish, seahorses, all those creatures that, you know, particularly if you're into marine life, could make a trip on their own. This is a place where you can see them all, not just over a week, but even occasionally over one dive. One dive, and, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, we've, you know, Adam and I have dived there a lot, but I've been on dives there with Adam or with people on our our, our photography workshops there and you come out of the water and you're just laughing you're just shaking your head going i cannot believe how many of these supposedly rare species we've seen on that one dive yeah. and as an underwater photographer what is great is that the majority of these species rely on their adaptations their camouflage to live a secretive life and once you've found them with the help of your dive guide you have a pr generally a pretty easy photographic challenge so yep. these are trips where, as an underwater photographer, 
every dive is yielding strong images. And right. then over the course of your trip, you're trying to refine those strong images into really, really memorable shots. So as an underwater photographer, it's a real favorite trip because you come back not only with lots and lots of pictures, but lots and lots of really good pictures. And it can be transformative to your portfolio. And I think this is really helped by the fact that the infrastructure that has built up in, in, in the resorts, sorry, in the straits, um, with the resorts and the dive operations, you know, they've really, really invested a lot of time and effort in creating particularly, I mean, obviously the, the accommodations and everything are, are, mm. are, are wonderful, but the actual dive teams involved and, you know, the quality of the guiding and, and you mentioned, you know, these dives where you come up, where you see everything in one dive. Well, oftentimes, actually, that's not really true because it may not be you that's seen everything in one dive, but the dive guide has found everything for you on that one dive. Um, mm. and, and these guys are incredible. They're, they're very, very knowledgeable about the subjects. They can often, um, you know, you, you give them a tick list of subjects that you want to see, which photographically is great because you can get your gear set up to, to achieve a particular goal with the subject and say, I want this. And they'll go and find you that, you know, and they will, they, they will, or they will turn around and say, we're not going to see it on this time. And they're normally right, um, you know, um, and, and, and that's, that again, helps this, this productivity. You know, you, you can really um, put, put, put bank on seeing particular species when they say they're going to be there and, and tailor your photographic approach accordingly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So um, I think a big part of going to dive in Lembe is to be aware that, you know, you're, the diving style is very different maybe from other places. Mm -hmm. Dives in Lembe are typically done in very small groups, maybe two to four of you with a particular dive guide. There might mm -hmm. be two dive guides on a boat. There might be eight of you or so on the boat and then those dive guides. And the goal of the diving is to find, you know, these amazing rare animals. Um, the dive guides you know, communicate a lot both within their resort and between the resorts about where there right. are special animals. And right. they know the dive sites and they know the topography of them, even though they look like a plain black sand slope to you. They n have got a good idea of where things are or where things were last time. And they are amazing at spotting things. And mm. the best way photographically to be productive in the strait is to learn to work really well with your dive guide. Yeah. And that means actually following their advice, following their suggestions, and, you know, if you're constantly disappearing off from where you're supposed to be, your dive guide is wasting most of their dive looking for you rather than finding new subjects. Whereas if you are an efficient, you know, good diver, you stay where you are, you understand how the dive is working, um, then the dive guide can be super productive for you. Um, and yeah. that works really well. I think the other aspect of the diving that's really important to get on top of is learning to dive well over black sand. Yep. and understanding how you can maintain what visibility there is, because you're already in an area with relatively low visibility. If you are not diving well in that environment, you are also going to create lots and lots of backscatter. And yep. and I would say by far the biggest cause of, of that is people diving overweighted. Yep. Um, it, you know, you, you, if you dive correctly weighted in Lembe, you are able to, you know, settle very lightly when you need to settle and take off very easily when you need to. Yeah. When people dive overweighted, what they find is they sink down, particularly their legs sink down, their fins end up very close to the seabed, even if they're not touching it. And they stir up huge plumes of dirt as they swim through that black sand. And that dirt stirred up follows you around all dive and your pictures go from being lovely and clean to being, being all, all murked out. So yeah. getting on top of those diving skills specifically for black sand is really, really valuable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I just, think on the subject of waiting briefly, and this is practical advice, this is not a destination where you tend to be swimming terribly much. Um, you know, you're not moving a great deal during dives. So you may find that, you know, picking a slightly thicker wetsuit is a is a is a reasonable thing to do or wearing an extra layer of wetsuit to keep you warm. But equally, if you're not used to doing that, make sure that you spend the time getting yourself correctly weighted for those additional layers. Um, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people, a lot of people who dive in primarily blue water destinations are used to diving in, in shorties or three mils or whatever. I, I find in Lemba I need a bit more than that. I get cold. Um, but that equally means that, you know, I'm gonna have to add a little bit more weight to cope with that and I need to make sure I get it right. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, I think it's 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 for some people it's a three mil destination. For some people it's a five mil destination. Depends mm. a lot on the individual. If you think you're going to feel the cold and you only have a three mil, take that vest, etc., with you so you can add some warmth on. The diving is also relatively deep a lot of the time. 
not sure. not deep deep, but it's you spend a lot of time in the you know fourteen to twenty meter range, mm. and that does tend to fill up your computer and compress your weight belt, uh, your wetsuit. Mm. So you need to be aware of those things. You don't tend to feel the depth in Lembe because you you descend into the, in the shallows onto the slope and follow the slope down. So you don't yeah. often go, you don't usually descend through the blue. So people often don't realize how deep they are a lot of the time until they look at their dive computer. Um, but I don't want to talk too much more about the diving, although we could talk for a long time about yeah. diving and how to dive well and the etiquette of diving with a guide and sharing subjects and that sort of thing. I actually wanted to get more onto a little bit more photographic advice um, yeah. for Lembe. Um, but I do recommend that you, you know, quickly on the guides, you learn to work well as a group. You learn to share subjects with other photographers. Um, for me, um, you know, one of the best pieces of advice is always, you know, see what the subject is that someone else is shooting. Go away, find a, you know, find something a similar size, you know, a rock or something on the seabed, and get your your settings and everything tuned in away from the subject, so that when you get your time on the subject, you've thought about how you're going to light it, you've got all your settings optimized, and then when you're on the subject, you're able to make good things. It's much better to share subjects and let people in than be ages and ages on a subject, moving things around. You will frustrate everyone you're diving with. And very soon, everyone in the group will be behaving very selfishly and wanting to, you know, whereas if you are all very generous with each other, you'll find the group works really well. And if you want to spend more time with the subject, let everyone else go first. Let them mm. fill their boots and then mm. stay with that particular subject that you want to get the shots of. Anyway, I actually wanted to get on to, to the photographic stuff. And I think there's a couple of things I'd say is although Lembe is a macro destination, a lot of the subjects there are not teeny tiny. Um, mm. A lot of the subjects there are bigger than you think. And for me, the best lens on most of the muck dives is not your tightest macro lens, but the slightly wider one. So, mm. you know, for example, in Nikon speak, there's a lot of subjects that are more 60 mil than 105 mil. So sure. if you are a you know, micro four thirds shooter and you have a 60 mil and a 45 mil, the 45 yeah. mil is often more suited in Lembe because the frogfish, the octopuses, the sea horses, they're not teeny tiny subjects. And you want to be as close as possible when shooting them because the water is not clear. Go in yeah. with your really strong macro lens. You, you, you need that. So I would definitely recommend that you need more than just, you know, your super duper macro. Actually, it's definitely a destination for more than one macro lens. But the workhorse yeah. lens is usually the wider viewing one. And I think I think the I think the the uh, this is somewhat digressing. The other thing is that you will almost always have the opportunity to shoot subjects more than once. So so you know you do have the option again. You know, if you've got a variety of lenses, it allows you to shoot a tighter tighter angle on it, and then to go back at, on a subsequent dive and shoot a shoot a, a wider angle. So so this you know having a variety of lens options, macro lens options, will make your your resulting imagery more varied and more interesting mm -hmm. as a result. I mean, you're not just getting one field of view. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the other piece of advice I generally give to people at the beginning of the trips is build up to the high magnification shooting when yeah. you go to Lembe. You know, you arrive in Lembe, you don't immediately screw on all the expensive close up lenses that you've bought and go out and shoot super macro unless you've just been shooting super macro the week before somewhere else. You know, yeah. much better to start off doing those wider shots get used yeah. to the conditions, get used to the type of shooting. And then over the days there, as you get really into the groove, pardon me, you build up your magnification yeah. and go, go towards. So, for example, you might see pygmy seahorses a couple of times during the week at Lembe. The first time you see pygmy seahorse, particularly if you've never seen one before, that's not the time to do the frame filling super macro shot. Go down without a close up diopter on and shoot a standard close focus macro shot. The pygmy seahorse will still be quite big in the frame. It's not yeah. going to completely fill the frame, but you'll still be able to see it very clearly. And you can do that shot of subject with a bit of context around it. Yeah. Then when you have the chance to repeat it, maybe that's when you can chase the higher magnification shot. You know, and it's the same with all the subjects with the nudies or, or whatever. You know, you don't have to get the high, ma no, high magnification doesn't necessarily mean better photo. And yeah. Lembe things are not tiny, tiny. Actually, quite a lot of the subjects are actually, you know, reasonable size. There's a lot of stuff finger length, golf ball size, squash ball size, tennis ball size type yep. subject. Yep. Um, yep. Um, then the other thing I, I think is really critical in Lembe is that um, although you have great subjects in Lembe, they generally live in really ugly places. 
Yeah. And the big photographic challenge you have as, a, as an underwater photographer in Lembe is to accept that you are going to be shown brilliant subjects, not become subject fixated, and instead become fixated whenever you're shown a good subject of, of asking yourself, how am I going to make this good subject into a great photo? Yeah. And that comes generally by controlling that ugly background and making sure that the picture looks as good as possible. And there are lots and lots of ways to take control of your background. There's not one way to do things. You know, you can do it by snooting the subject. You can do it by inward lighting the subject. You can do it by finding the subject posing in the right place so you can frame it against open water. You can shoot yeah. shallow depth of field. You can shoot long exposures. All these things can help you hide the ugly black sand. But yep. you need to make that part of your thought process with every subject. And so, you know, for me in Lembe, whenever I'm showing something by a guide, my thought isn't get the shot. My thought is, what is the shot here? How am I taking control of this frame so that yeah, my yeah. background looks as good as possible? And yeah. above all other things, taking control. You know, Lembe is famous for its black sand. But I don't want ugly black sand, particularly with white bits of shell and all sorts of distractions on it dominating my underwater photos. I want yeah. beautiful subjects set against a background that is not distracting from them. And, and I think this is a really important I mean, uh, criteria is, th is that an average subject against a good background will look better than, than a, an incredible subject against a poor background. And, and certainly I think it's something to be aware of, you know, the dive guides oftentimes will swim past average subjects that may have good backgrounds in order to find you something that's really exotic and rare. And that's kind of their brief and, and it's, it's not being critical, you know, but there is so many wonderful subjects. And obviously the, the obvious one that springs to mind in Lembe is the Bangai Cardinal fish, which is a really beautiful little fish, hangs out in schools. Um, it, it's very charismatic, it's easy to catch it. And often you'll get it around, you know, anemones that have the skirt showing. So you get the guest of purple background, something like that. And that's a great shot. And, and, and it is a very, very pleasing image, but there's no dive guide in the world that's going to swim along and point out Bangai Cardinal fish, <laughs> you know, um, and, and this is something, again, this idea of, you know, switching on to, OK, I'm not here to collect species. I'm here to capture beautiful imagery. And that's that's really important. Yeah. So um, I think the final thing I, I wanted to say really is is avoid getting too fixated on those wish lists, yeah. both for species and for dive sites. Um, yeah. For me, um, yes, part of going to Lembe is seeing the rare species and it is super exciting when you mm. see them. However, I think as a photographer, you need to remind yourself that you want to create great images. And as Adam was just saying, you know, those don't necessarily need to be of the things that the dive guide is most excited about. Often the best pictures are of something that you yourself have recognized potential in that isn't on no one's wish list. And I think yeah. if you have this big species wish list, you end up becoming like a stamp collector. Oh, I've yeah. got my frogfish shot. I don't want to take another frogfish. I've got my seahorse. I now want this or this or this. And you end up with average shots of everything and no memorable shots. And a lot of photographers do fall into that trap the first time they go to Lembe. They yeah. just end up getting absorbed into this whole chasing the rare subjects thing and want as many species as possible and instead and end up with a lot of average shots. Also in Lembe, it's important to remember that it's the same a little bit with the dive sites. Every time I go to Lembe, and I've been many, many times down the years, the particular dive sites that are hot and rich with subjects are completely different. So yep. you may have been before, you may have had a friend who've been before, and they say, this dive site was incredible. Yep. Over the course, particularly when we've done our longer trips, we've seen dive sites become Change. hot, fill up with species, be the one site that everyone wants to do in the strait, and then the species move on. On a coral reef, animals tend to live in very small territories, and those territories are stable for most of their life. If you dive yeah. a particular pinnacle, you'll see the same angelfish there again and again and again. Yeah. On muck diving sites, the animals are much less specific to areas. They move around. They may move into an area, feed for a while, then move on to another area. And yeah. in Lembe, where the dive sites are close together, that means they can move several dive sites, even in the course of a night um, yeah. sometimes. And, and as a result, no dive site stays hot long term and it's why when you arrive in Dem Lembe you'll see the dive centers have 40 or 50 dive sites and at yeah. any one time there's particular ones they want to go to because they know that they're hot yeah. um so you you want to not arrive there saying i must dive this dive site because my friend said it's the best go yeah. to the places the guys want to take you because they're yeah. trying to find you the most stuff um and, and 
as you say, and they communicate not just amongst the, the individual guys in the resort, but they communicate in the resorts throughout the straits. So 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 by allowing them to, to decide the best choice to dive site, that that you know you're getting the experience of the of, of the dive guides throughout the strait, not just mm -hmm. Not just the guys you're dealing with. That's that's a huge, you know, it's a huge benefit to productivity. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So even if like some of the, the 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 resort owners are a little bit competitive with each other, all their yeah. dive guides all go out and socialise with the dive guides from the other places, yeah. and yeah. and share the knowledge around a little bit because that actually benefits all of them because all of them are trying yeah. to give the best service to their customers, and if they've yeah. all got you know little things that they can see, all the better. But yeah, it's a, it's I have to say in conclusion, it's a fun. Probably my favourite place to go and take photos because it is so rich, so productive, and it's yeah. always such a pleasure staying there um, is, because yeah. the resorts are so nice and they're, they're my favourite workshops to run. I think. Yeah, I think they're. It's a very, very privilege. We're very, very privileged to visit these places, and it's certainly it's one of those places. Whenever I come away, it's um, it's always a, it's always hard to part. I think. Um, mm -hmm. With that in mind, Alex and I will. Well, all things being equal, we hope to be there in November. Um, so we don't know what what will happen in the world in between, but the plan is still on to be there in November. So we look forward to that. But equally, you know, um, Alex has has a bulk of work from Lembe over the years. Um, would you on your website if you put Lembe in, will that will it pop up? Yeah, your Lembe images, Alex? definitely the best way to find it. If, um, my website has got a, a, a stock library you can search it's on the front page at the top of the page. There's a box that says search Alex's pictures. Type Lembe yeah. in there, type muck diving in there. You'll see a yeah. good variety of subjects. Um, yeah. I am not a species chaser, so it's not going to be necessarily here's everything you can see in Lembe. I'm yeah. interested in good pictures, not species pictures of everything. But yeah. I would encourage you to look at those pictures and also look at how I'm dealing with those that ugly sand and how yeah. I don't let that ugly sand dominate my pictures. It's it's part of the pictures, but it's I always want the subject to outshine that that ugly place it's living i guess we were drawing it to a close but actually that's probably a good another good bit of advice for people is is people that are planning a trip to lembe should actually go out and seek imagery from lembe and see how people have captured what they've done with it i think that's a it's a really good way of 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 getting a bit of a handle on what conditions are like as well sorry i i know <laughs> i'm digressing at this point thank you very much alex um and um Thanks again to Lembo Resort for sponsoring this episode. Um, we the, the sponsors make these uh, the webpixel live possible, so so we really appreciate the support. Um, please feel free to add any comments or suggestions about um, about diving in Lembo or about episodes you'd like us to record in the future. Those these are all possible. As I say, we are going to do more destination-based episodes in the future, so um, expect some more of those. And drop please drop us a like if you enjoyed. Thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing you next time.